I know we have eaten a bit, eaten, yani tumekula sa, a bit of your time, but may the Lord bless you as you minister to us. Amen. Let's appreciate Pastor Kimani. Amen. Uh, just before we read the scripture today, again, just a reminder, this is uh, Christmas season. Uh, preparing to finish the year, start another one. Uh, devotionally, if you have those who use the daily bread, our daily bread is available uh, for 2018 at the bookshop. We also have uh, the calendar, uh, the, our daily bread calendar, again also available at the bookstore. And then we have a, a ladies' um, devotional for every day. It's called A Passion for Purpose. Again, available at our bookstore, uh, and you are able to just get a copy. Bwana Sifiwe. Shall we stand now as we read the scripture? And as we thank God for this wonderful opportunity. Again, we thank God for Monday. Um, she, this lady does a lot. Uh, one time she was traveling to Turkana and they were involved in an accident and she really uh, injured her back and she, for quite some time she was not active but when the moment she got well she was again back in motion. Hallelujah. I thank God also for Mobea who is a, is a wonderful friend. Uh, I remember when I was arrested in Ivasha. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for over speeding. I was taken to prison there for, for, for a, a moment before I was taken to court. Um, hallelujah. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, stop smiling. One day you'll be caught yourself. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you thank God for people who are used to these places and I managed to send a message to him and he sent from his house group, sent two ladies who came by the time they arrived, I was in court uh, being charged uh, for over speeding and uh, I pleaded guilty uh, and I was fined. When these ladies arrived, they said, Ambrose, don't worry about the fine, we have paid the fine and I was able to come out. But just to have friends coming to prison, coming to court, was such an assurance that it is well. And just like the chaplain says, Jesus is in prison. Uh, reaching out and touching very many people. And so welcome to an opportunity to prison. The doors are open for us at Paki, and you get a, an opportunity visit. It will change your life. Hallelujah. We are reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 1 to 20. The story of Christmas, and I want to share one or two thoughts. The Bible says this. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee into Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields, nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you You'll find a baby wrapped in, a, in clothes and lying in a manger. 
Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men, on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, but Mary, treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 20 says, The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which, which were just as they had been told. And this is God's word, and God's people say, Amen. We may be seated in God's presence. Our Heavenly Father, this afternoon, we take an opportunity to hear your voice, to hear your word. And Father, thank you again for such a blessed service. <coughs> the testimonies that have come and the singing that has been sung, the giving that has happened, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you. Father, as your word is preached today, your servant just is opening his mouth. May the Holy Spirit communicate that which is required today. Father, we thank you for those watching us online, wherever they are. Some in this city, some in this country, and some beyond. And we want to bless them wherever they are. That the word that is being preached here, the impact it will have here, will also have in their lives, wherever they are. Holy Father, we say thank you. We bless you for this season. And we say thank you. Because we have prayed in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> By the way, um, Pastor Simon, um, we were praying and saying he's in Australia. He's actually beyond Australia. He's in New Zealand. And yesterday, he had a wonderful wedding. And we are praying for him even as he prepares to come back. And so God is good. God is taking Paki to many places. And so you better be getting a passport if you don't have, because God will take you places in Jesus' name. Amen? This month, we are talking about what? What is the theme? Covenant Festival. And that word covenant festival is blessed worship. And that's what I want to share with you in the next few minutes. Blessed worship. And just to show you that God desires us to worship him. And God has created the season of Christmas. The season of festivities. That he is the one to be worshipped. He is the one to be lifted up. And this story that we've just read, which is a very real story. You know, sometimes you read things in the Bible and you think they are just stories. But I want you to know that the stories in the Bible happened. Christmas actually happened. It was not called Christmas at that time. But the birth of Jesus Christ happened. Jesus was actually born. Jesus was prophesied that he would be born. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, if I can just read that briefly. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 9 Verse 6, it was a prophecy that had been given. And this is what God's word says at that time. It says, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 7, 14, this is what the Bible also says. Again, it is a prophecy. The Bible says this. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him who? Emmanuel. This happened in Matthew 
chapter 1, verse 18, that the prophecy became a reality. And the Bible says this, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. The Bible goes on to say in verse 19, because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this. When God promises you something, he will fulfill it. I am saying, may God fulfill that which he promised you this season. May this December not get finished before God's fulfillment comes your way. Let me tell you this. God does amazing things. And the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their, their strength. The Bible says in Numbers 23 verse 19 about God promising. And this is what he says. God is not a man that he should lie. Not a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Hallelujah. I don't know what promises God has brought your way. And sometimes you're wondering, will it happen? Can God make it happen? Let me tell you this. For God to fulfill what he had said about a virgin, God created the scenario for it to happen. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 30, about Mary and her encounter with an angel. This is what the Bible says. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. I'm talking to somebody here and I'm saying, You have found favor with God. But the angel said, You have found favor. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. The Bible goes on to say this. Now Mary is now asking the angel. How will this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Let me tell you this. With God, nothing is impossible. Look at verse 36. Uh, it goes on to say, Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. And then verse 37 says, For nothing is impossible with God. Look at the next verse. Mary now responded, and Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Ladies and gentlemen, why did God go through all these things to bring Jesus into our lives? Why are we celebrating Christmas? And all I want to say is this. It's so that we can worship God. Amen? God loves to be worshipped. God created us to love, to worship him. And so there are four things I want to bring to our attention about this aspect of worship. The first one is this. As we talk about this blessed worship, we need to remember the place of worship. We need to remember the provision of worship. We need to remember the position of worship and the power of worship. These words come from the passage we just read, and I want to start with the first one, the place of worship. 
the place of worship. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went where? To his own town. Let me tell you this. God wants to be worshipped everywhere. Hallelujah. And God was arranging this situation for Jesus to be born so that people would come and find someone to worship. God has given us his son and he has said the place of worship is everyone can find a place in his own town, in his own place to worship God. Let me tell you this. After this service, Will the worship service have ended? I'm asking. After this service, will worship have ended? No. Worship does not end with the benediction. In fact, in this church we say, we come here to be serviced. That is why it is called a service. Hello? And then we release you so that you can go and serve. You come to be serviced. Then you go out to serve. And as you go out to serve, your service is a response to your worship to the living God. Let me tell you this. You can worship everywhere. You can worship in your house. You can worship in your car. You can worship on Route 11. Hallelujah. I hope you know what Route 11 is. Thank you, Jesus. You can worship on your bicycle. You can worship on, uh, on Anduthi. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's a Greek word. You can worship anywhere. And we want to say this. As, we, as you celebrate Christmas, remember who are you worshiping. Wherever you are, in your office, wherever, worship God. Amen. Look at Psalms 24. The Bible says this about worship and where you can worship, the place of worship. This is what it says. Psalms 24. It says the earth is whose? Is the Lord's. And everything in it. The world and all who live in it. In other words, God is saying you can worship everywhere and anybody can worship him. Anywhere. Anytime. The Bible says, verse 2, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. And then in verse 3 he says, who may ascend the heel of the Lord. Who is this who can come and worship God? Who may stand in his holy place? It goes on to say, He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. Verse 5 says, He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God. Of Jacob Selah. Now listen to what David said about this worship. Psalms 27 verse 4. The Bible says this about David and about his desire to worship. He says, one thing I ask of who? Of the Lord. This is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. And to seek him where? In his temple. Let me tell you this. The Lord is here. I'm saying the Lord is here. I don't know where you've come from and what kind of situations you're facing right now. But you know, when you take time to come into the house of God, God is waiting for you. God is waiting to give you a word. God is waiting to give you a rima word that will open doors for you and no man can shut that door. And that is why during that season, God had to use Caesar Augustus. You know, God can use anybody. God touched a man called Caesar Augustus and said, I want you to make sure that there's a census all over the Roman Empire. It caused people to begin to move. Let me tell you this. God has destiny makers for you. God has people that will rearrange the situations of your life. In Jesus' mighty name. You have no idea what God has in store for you in 2018. In 2017, God has been such a blessing to us. And we are going to finish this year strong. The way God used Caesar Augustus, who did not even know him. Let me tell you this, God will use people who don't even go to church 
to turn your life around. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be open. You know, sometimes Christians, we walk around as if only Christians can minister to Christians. Hello? Then we squeeze that to say, only Baptists can meet everybody else. PCA cannot make it. Methodists, with all their methods, they cannot do anything. You find a Baptist cannot talk to a Catholic because they believe a Catholic cannot tell them anything. God is bigger than that. And sometimes we miss our blessings because they come packaged in a package we didn't understand. Hallelujah. God will use anyone. He used this Roman ruler who began to make things happen so that his son would be born in a place called Bethlehem. There's a destiny maker coming your way. I'm saying there's a destiny maker coming your way. There's somebody who's going to unlock your situation in Jesus' name. And some of them may not even know Jesus Christ, but God can use them. Some of them may even be of a totally different religion, but God can use them. These guys walk around saying they're atheists. It's a joke. They're not atheists. Just take them 33,000 feet in a plane and then release them. The one thing that will come out of their mouth is, Mwa than you are kwa. We all believe in God. We just have not been given an opportunity to open our mouth and say, God have mercy on me. Hello? Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, are you an atheist? If they said yes, just tell them, you just wait until you get an opportunity. You will cry out to who? To God. We were created by God. He stamped his image in all of us. And why did he do that? That one day we will find him. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28. This is what the Bible says. Acts, chapter 17. Paul is preaching and this is what he says. It says, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. You know, God, God made us and God wants us to serve him and to worship him. And so, no matter where you are, God is saying, you can worship me. Hallelujah. You can worship me. In fact, in bars where people drink, that's one place that people sing and worship God in amazing ways. Hallelujah. Once they have been encouraged by the spirits that are inside them, they, they become choir leaders in the bar and they sing all kinds of hymns and songs and spiritual songs. And let me tell you this, better them who are praising God under the influence than you who has never opened your mouth to sing even one song to the living God. May you come under the influence, not of those spirits. May you come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And you know when they sing, they don't care. You, you come here and you restrict yourself to singing. Them they sing completely. Hmm? There's a song that became very popular and it was sung a lot in the bars. Ile na itwa dawa, unakumbuka ile? Huh? Kuna dawa, kuna dawa. Now, the singer who wrote that song, the dawa was Jesus Christ, but them they're singing Kuna dawa, kuna dawa, tukunywe yote. Kuna dawa, kuna dawa. Tell your neighbor, you are called to worship God. But very quickly, there's a provision. There is a place. There's also a provision of worship. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. Let me just read that very quickly. Luke chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. The Bible says this. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. 
While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You know, God has provided us provision for worship. And that person is Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, it says this. About these men who came from many places to look for this child. It says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. And they asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's, people's chiefs, priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Now, take it to verse 10. In verse 10, the Bible says, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. In verse 11, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and did what? And worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of ma. Let me tell you this. The one God has provided for us to worship is none other than Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Hallelujah. Who are you worshipping this Christmas? Let me tell you this. God has already provided one who is to be worshipped. His name is Jesus Christ. You see the word Christmas, if you remove the, the last three letters, M, A, and S, what do you have? You see, Christ is the reason for Christmas. Now, when Christ is not in that picture, you have M, E, S, S. What is that? <clears throat> you have a mess. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, please don't have a mess this Christmas. Tell your neighbor, have Christ. And you'll have Christmas. Hallelujah. Jesus is our reason for celebration. There's the place, there's a provision, but I want to talk about the position of worship. There's a position of worship. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. This is what the Bible says. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ. He is Christ the Lord. Verse 12. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God, and they were saying, verse 14, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. I want to talk about the position of worship. If I can get that slide back, the position of worship. The position of worship is what? The glory of God. Let me tell you this. That is why you can worship God anywhere. Because where the glory of God is, it positions you to worship God. Let me read Psalms 24 verse 7. The Bible says this about this glory. It says, lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. That the king of what? Of glory may come in. It goes on to say, who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. The Bible goes on to say, lift up your heads, all you gates. 
Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he? This King of glory, the Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Now let me ask you, if the King of glory, King of glory, if the King of glory comes in, what does he come in with? He comes in with his glory. When you tell the king not to come, then he does not come, even his glory does not, does not come. The glory of God is amazing. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. You know this verse, it's a familiar verse. It says, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces, all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. In other words, when God positions us in his glory and we find ourselves there, we ourselves are transformed. We ourselves begin to change. You know, there are people who go to church. The way they came in is exactly the way they go out. Because even though they went to a place to worship, they did not connect with the glory of God. I pray that today, as we worship God, as we celebrate him, you will connect to the glory of God, because it is that glory that transforms you. And even when, wherever, wherever you are, as you celebrate, wherever you sit, just say this in your prayer, Father, I welcome the King of glory to come in. Let me tell you this, before five minutes are over, the glory of God will touch you, and you will not come out of that place the same. Listen to what Psalms 26 verse 8 says about the glory. Psalms 26 verse 8. He says, I love the house where you live, O Lord. The place where what? Your glory dwells. Huh? I love the house where you live, O Lord. The place where your glory dwells. Look at Psalms 57 verse 5 and 11. This is what the Bible says. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be where? Be over all the earth. Go to verse 11. Verse 11 again repeats the same thing. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. I want to declare this. May the glory of God come upon you. I'm saying may God's glory come upon you. Those watching us online, I'm saying may God's glory come upon you. That this season and time, you will actually sense the glory of God resting in your life. And let me tell you this, things will begin to transform. Things will begin to shift. Things will begin to change. Psalms 63, verse 2. The Bible says this. Again, talking about God's glory. He says, I have seen you in the sanctuary. And I have beheld what? Your power and your glory. When we finish the Lord's prayer, it usually says, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Now, we love the kingdom. We love the power. Can we invite the glory? I believe somebody is being touched by the glory of God right now as I'm talking to you. The glory of God is what makes you cry in a service even when you don't think there's anything you're crying about. Hallelujah. You know, there are sometimes there are people who sit in the service, I'm preaching, I'm talking, and then they are crying, and they don't know why they are crying. You know, and that is the glory of God. They are having an encounter with God, not with Pastor Ambrose. They are having an encounter with who? With God. Some of us come with so many problems. We don't need to come with them and go back with them. We need to come and deposit them in God's glory. And just say, glory of God, come. And allow God's glory to touch our situations. Uh, some of you come 
and your husbands drop you here and they leave to pick you after the service. You know, one of these days just say, Father, as my husband pick, drops me, thank God he actually dropped me. And as he goes, fill his car with your glory. Hallelujah. Fill his car with your glory. Don't curse your husband. Don't fight with him. Just tell God, glory of God, fill that car. He will be driving that car wherever he's going, crying, and he doesn't know why he is crying. He will be having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Your children need the glory of God upon their lives. Let me tell you this. God's glory is a place of transformation. When Moses left the presence of God, the glory, his face was what? His face was shining. It was brilliant. He didn't know, but the glory of God had touched his life. The angel sang, Luke 2.14. This is what they said one more time. So let me read it for you. Luke 2.14. They were saying, now these were the angels, they were saying, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. As I tie up the message, let me show you one person who was really touched by that glory. His name is Isaiah. So Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says this. This is the power of God's glory. He says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs. Now seraphs are angels. Each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces. With two they covered their feet. And with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of what? His glory. Look at the next verse. At the sound of their voices... The doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. <clears throat> Woe to me, he cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a, with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. The Bible goes on to say, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I say, Here am I. Send me. He touched the glory. May the glory of God touch you. I'm saying, May the glory of God touch you. May the glory of God touch your children. May the glory of God touch you yourself. May the glo glory of God touch your neighborhood. Touch your husband. Touch your boss. That bonus that did not come, may it come. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I'm saying now to the bosses who are here. May the Lord bless you so much that you'll have enough to give bonuses to your employees. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to the bosses in Jesus' name. You know, some of you cast bosses, but today we want to bless the bosses in Jesus' name. I want to ask if you, if you think you're a boss, just stand up right now, because I want to command a blessing into your life in any way. You know, some, some of us uh, don't want to be known as bosses. Um, so some of you are already start, uh, just saying, Allah, kumbe kuna kazi hapa. I want to speak a blessing to these bosses. Uh, whom God has just, that God will increase you, that God will bless you tremendously, Amen. that the glory of God will come upon you today Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, I'm also talking to you who are in the overflow tent, those watching us online. I believe that God has given you that responsibility for a reason and for a purpose. And in the name of Jesus, I'm now speaking to you and I'm saying, may God's glory come upon you. May God's glory come upon your work. May God's glory come upon your business. May your business be enlarged and expanded. May God come upon your profession. Whether you're a lawyer, a doctor, or whatever, an accountant, may the Lord bless you indeed. May you arise up to become a blessing. May the riches come to you from the east. May they come to you from the west. May they come to you from the south. May they come to you from the north. 
May God fill your baskets until they are overflowing. May God give you wisdom and understanding to be the leader you are. May God increase you and bless the work of your hands. May God give you new ideas for 2018. May 2018 be such an, an amazing year for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And just like God told Abraham, may God bless you so that you can become a blessing. Receive this blessing. I'm saying receive this blessing. May the glory of God rest upon you. In Jesus name. Now give God a big hand and tell him thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now please be seated. Now those of you who are sitting down, now you stand up. I said those who are sitting down, now you stand up. I don't know whether you're looking forward to become a boss. Hello? I want to command a blessing upon you now. In Jesus' name. Father, you are, can see these ones who are standing up right now. You know their situations and their positions in life. I declare to them today, in the name of Jesus, and I'm speaking to you today, may the Lord open doors for you. I'm saying may the Lord open doors for you. For the Lord has said, I open a door before you that no man can shut. I am declaring that your future is bright. I'm declaring that in the next couple of days, God is going to amaze you. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm saying to you, just be strong and faithful and focused. The Lord is taking you to the next level. And when he does, do not forget to thank him. Receive it now. In Jesus' name. And God's people say Come on, let's give God a big hand. Amen. Finally, the place of worship, the provision of worship, the position of worship, now the power of worship, and I just want to make one, two statements, and then we shall pray. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 15 to 20, it says something about Mary. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds say to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph. And the baby was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, tell your neighbor, but Mary. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them where? In her heart. Let me tell you, this is where the power of worship comes from. Where you can sit alone in your heart and treasure the things God is telling you and ponder them in your heart. Hello? Let me read that verse in the Amplified Version. Luke chapter 2, verse 19. It says this, But Mary treasured, amplified, just turn it to amplified version. It says, But Mary was keeping within herself all these things, all these sayings, weighing and pondering them in her heart. Let me tell you this, when you begin to do those things, you know sometimes you come to church, like the Bible says, People hear the word of God, they get excited, but the moment they leave the gate of the church, the devil comes and takes everything they had, and it is gone. I don't know if some of you have that experience. You go out of that gate, you cannot remember anything. When somebody meets you out there and asks you, how was the service? Hey! Powerful! <laughs> what did Pastor Ambrose say? Ha! He said, Mwadani. That's all the guy can remember. What do you think happens? The devil is waiting to just pick this word from you. Then the Bible says some seed fall into hard places. You go out there, you meet all kinds of things. You're, somebody's calling you. Somebody wants you to pay his, 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 his debt. All kinds of things. And you forget the word of God. And you cannot, there's nothing to ponder. You don't know what to do. Let me tell you this. 
after this service, <clears throat> we are declaring the devil will not take away this word. The devil will not take this word from you. Listen to how David pondered in his heart. You try doing that. Psalms 51, verse 6. This is what the Bible says about David. How he spent time pondering in his heart. He said this, Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Look at verse 7. He says, Cleanse me with high soap and I will be clean. Alright? Let's go back. Cleanse me with high soap and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Verse 8 says, Let me hear your joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. He goes on to say in verse 9, Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Verse 10, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Verse 11, Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. And then finally verse 12, he says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. That man was pondering in his heart. He was just treasuring the things God was saying. And one day he said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you better taste and know that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. The Bible says about Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. You know, meditating is not in your mind. You don't sit in your mind, you say, you're, you're, somebody's just meditating. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, that is not meditating. Meditating is not sitting next to a candle saying, mm. Hello? Meditating means to talk and talk again and talk again the word of God. Ponder this word. Talk about it. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. By the way, the Lord is my shepherd. 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 Shepherd. If he's the shepherd, I'm the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. By the way, he makes me. He makes me. He makes me. He makes me. Thank you, Jesus. Make me. Make me. Make me. That is somebody who is doing what? Meditating. Pondering in their hearts what God is saying. You try that. Power of worship will gush out of your heart. You begin to say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Something will gush out of your spirit and you'll begin to bless the Lord and bless the Lord and bless the Lord because your worship is coming from inside your heart. The Bible says, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. I'm talking to somebody here and saying, glory. I'm talking to somebody and saying, glory. I'm saying, glory. I'm speaking, glory. I'm saying there is glory upon you. For those watching us online, I'm saying there is glory. As you stand up now, I'm saying glory to you. I'm saying glory to you. The presence of God is in our midst now. Enter into this glory. I'm talking about glory. This is called the blessed worship. I'm talking about glory. Take a moment right now as the worship team just get, begins to get ready. And I'm saying glory. Experience the glory of God. Experience the presence of God. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Just begin to say glory to God. Just begin to say glory to God. Begin to bless Him. This is called the blessed worship. The place of worship, the provision of worship is Jesus. The position of worship is His glory. The treasure as you ponder in your heart, you're going to sense the power of God minister to you today. Take a moment to thank God for something now. Take time to say, God, I thank you. 
I bless you. I honor you. Thank you, Jesus. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Oh. more time just sing it out here we go there is power, power. in the background, you take a moment to be to encounter the glory of God. The presence of God. God loves you. God loves you. Take a moment to just stay in God's presence. The people from the east, they came. They opened their hearts and their treasures and they worshipped the baby child. The baby boy who had been born. Take a moment to reflect this year from January to today. You are here and it's because of God. Why don't you thank Him? Thank Him. Appreciate Him. God has provided for you every month. You never starved. Many of you drive. You've never left your car at home. Because of lack of fuel, God provided. Your children are strong and healthy. God provided. Some of them did exams and they finished. God provided. You have a reason to thank God. Some of you waited for a child for a long time and that child has now come. You have a reason to worship God. You have a reason to praise Him. You have a reason to bless the Lord. Encounter the glory of God. The Lord is in the house today. We've been told about the prison ministry. Make your mind that you'll also take God's glory in the prison. By the way, the glory is already there in prison. Because God is there. Take a moment to thank God. Take a moment to know that the next couple of days before the year is over, Commit them to God. Ask God to give you an opportunity to finish this year strong. And to enter 2018 prepared for the new vision that God has planned for you. This is our time of just consecrating ourselves and dedicating ourselves to God as we thank Him, as we bless Him, as we honor Him. He's been a good God. He's been a good God. Has he been good to you? Tell him that you're a good God. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for the glory of God that is going to walk with you out of this sanctuary today. And God's promises for you will come to pass. If God said it, there's nothing the devil can do about it. The Lord is reaching out to you wherever you are. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ this whole year, the year is ending. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Why are you waiting? Receive Jesus today. Come to Jesus today. Don't go home. And your life has not been given to Christ. For those who have given your life to Christ, give God more space in your life. Let God's glory increase in your life. Father, we thank you. 
Your people are praying and they are thanking God. And so, Father, I want to thank God with them and say to God be the glory. Lord, I'm about to bless them. But, Father, together we want to now to lift up our hands and just give you a big, big hand and say thank you. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, somebody. You better give God thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you glad you came? As I prepare to speak the benediction to you, I want to ask one person who has never given their life to Christ, just one, so that you don't leave this service. One person. Maybe I'm talking to you. I want you to come and stand with me here. Just one person. And come quickly. Stand with me here. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Karibu. What's your name? Cecilia. God loves you. Hallelujah. One person. I'm talking to that one person. Here is the one person. But you are another one. You are the other one person. I don't know if you are on my right, upstairs, wherever you are, watching, for, watching online. I'm talking to that person. Because Cecilia, let me tell you this. God loves you. God loves you. Big time. God cares about you. You know those people came from the east. They came from very far to look for Jesus. You, where, where do you come from? Nyawururu. Paka apa. You are from Mudiru to here. You are blessed. And today your life is going to change. Hallelujah. Life is going to change. Praise God. Amen. So I want to pray for you. Are you the other person? You better show up. Don't take off. This is the best place to be. Hold my hand. Just say this after me. Father, I come to you. I give my life to you. Today, my heart is your home. Today, show yourself mighty in my life. As I finish this year, finish it with me. When you open the new one, walk with me into the destiny that you have for me. Today, I surrender my life to you. And I thank you because of the great things that are about to happen in my life. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Let's give God a big hand. Amen. Amen. Now, you see, you see this lady here. She'll write your name on a card, and then we can follow you and bless you. Thank you.
Let's appreciate the prison choir. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks for coming. My sister, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Let's celebrate women of impact today who graduated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now celebrate your neighbor in Jesus' name. Amen. The band and the worship team today, come on, let's appreciate them. Remember next Sunday, how many services? Next Sunday is the 24th. How many services? 8.30 and 11.30. On Monday, how many services? At what time? Thank you. The on 31st, it's a Sunday. How many services? At what time? The following day is the 1st of January, which is Monday. How many services? On the 1st of January, how many services here? None. So don't come here on the 1st. Otherwise, if you come and you find there's nobody else, the rapture would have taken place. Our first service in January is on the what? The 7th. Hallelujah. So if you're traveling, traveling, don't just show up here with your entire family on the 1st of January. There will be no service here. But on the 7th, there's a service. We shall be unveiling the new vision for 2018 which is already ready to be given to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. During this celebrative season, please, don't overeat and don't overdrink. Hello. Drive well. Don't drive drunk. Hello. Preserve your life. May the Lord also preserve you. Don't play stupid games. Don't go crazy about this and that. We want you here in the new year. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor we need you here in the new year. Hallelujah. Now since some of you may not see each other during Christmas, we're going to sing that song. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy I I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy new year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We Now give three people a high five wherever you are. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I hope you're not slapping somebody. God bless you. Now stretch your hands to me as I bless you today. And while your hands are up, why don't you give God another big hand? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. And now I want to bless you. Just stretch your hands to me. Father, thank you. This has been an awesome service. And now in the name that is above every name, I declare to you this blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the countryside. You're blessed when you come in. You're blessed when you go out. You're blessed when you rise up. You're blessed when you sit down. Your family is blessed. Your children are blessed. The work of your hands is blessed. You're blessed to become a blessing. We declare to you that this Sunday you are blessed. In Monday you are blessed. 
Your Tuesday is blessed. Your Wednesday is blessed. Your Thursday is blessed. Your Friday is blessed. Your Saturday is blessed. Sunday, you're coming back with a testimony. You're blessed to become a blessing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you, Yani you, I'm talking about you. You shall dwell in God's house, in God's favor, in God's provision, in God's protection, in God's abundance. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas.